Do y'all remember this Reddit where this woman figured out that her boyfriend was tampering with her soup and he basically took her run money and then they had to run away? Well, she updated things. Um, she, she, she said that she thought they were safe. They took the money. They left. They found an apartment, but he followed her. He followed her. Um, I don't know if you remember this story, but that's what happened. She gave an update. She had gotten a restraining order and she put an update up a week ago and said a restraining order didn't stop him. This morning he found me. I've been sick as hell. So after I dropped my daughter off at school, I went straight home. I didn't drive around to make sure no one was following me. I messed up. He broke my nose and shattered my orbital bone. He is in jail. Sorry for this update, y'all. And this is like a full month later after she had run. She put in this restraining order. Um, all of these red flags. And this is the woman who found like a tracker um, in her cat's carrier somewhere. It was like sewn in. So this man has truly been stalking her. But she's sitting up here taking this on like I messed up. She, she did not mess up in this situation. Like this person said, you did not mess up. He did. Um, this person says, you didn't mess up. You did everything right. The police failed you. I'm so sorry he found you. I hope they throw the book at him. I have been so worried about you since your last post. I hope he can't bail out. Jesus, I hope you have a smooth recovery. You have been through enough. Please stay safe. Um, somebody else said, this wasn't a mistake. It was an intentional choice to commit assault and battery. Stop blank, downplaying bad behavior. So I guess the person that has a deleted comment must have been downplaying bad behavior. The mistake was to choose to commit assault and battery. And then this person said, no, a mistake is something you do once. And when it's repeated over and over again, it's a choice. So, yes, I just wanted to bring this update in just a short one. Now, this person says the rental laws in many jurisdictions let you break leases without financial penalties in DV situations. Apologies if you know this already. And then the OP swoops in. She says, my previous landlord let me out of my lease without a penalty and my new one will too. I just can't afford to move. You know how some people jump into these conversations where there's DV and they're like, you just need to run. You just need to run. There are real life situations that actually require money like buying gas, buying food, trying to figure out how you're going to like get a hotel room. So like people actually do have to game plan and just saying run is great in theory, but not always possible for some people if you don't actually have money. This person says it might be worth contacting some DV organizations, victim assistance services in your area to see what resources there are. As much as it sucks to think about relocating to a shelter, for a bit could be really helpful. They have very strict protocols, so victims stay hidden. You could look into temporarily staying at the shelter so you can save up money for your next move. She weighs in one more time after this person says, this is not your fault. It is in no way, shape, or form your fault. It is entirely his fault because he is an abuser. I hope he stays in jail, but you need to protect yourself in the likely event he is released. Can you get connected to, with DV resources in your area or another community? And she says, I'm sure his mom will bail him out. Why can't he just move on? He took my money and my peace. What more can he take until he is satisfied? We know what they can take. We've seen it plenty of times. We've seen it plenty of times. And this time is not going to be any different unless she gets away. All right, you guys, go ahead. Let me know what you think about this one. I'm glad that she jumped in and gave us an update. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Someone sent me this um, Reddit thread, and I think it's important to talk about it because some helping type of people really are codependent and need to work through those types of things before getting in relationships. Because on the one hand, someone will be a taker, 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 and someone will be a giver, giver, giver. And neither one of those are particularly healthy, especially for the giver type of women. This, um, I don't know if this, that's this dynamic, but let's get into this one. This is in the codependency Reddit. She says, the man I'm seeing feels left out if even a brief conversation doesn't include him. How can I resolve this? So he feels something, but she thinks that she needs to resolve it. You can already see the problem. She says, hi, everybody. This is a difficult situation that's upsetting me. The lovely, lovely man I'm romantically involved with has a life where he's felt excluded and unloved 
and he is significantly codependent. I relate to him a lot because before my healing journey, I was highly obsessive and codependent and never experienced a healthy relationship. So there's no judgment on my part for some of his behaviors. I'm just felt left, I'm sorry, I'm just left feeling somewhat despondent and powerless sometimes. I've come to realize that if we are in a group of friends and we're all enjoying ourselves, he will feel great. But if I start talking to a friend, even briefly about something he doesn't know about, he will get extremely uncomfortable and upset and say how lonely and excluded he feels. I feel like I can't talk about things like movies he's never watched or games he's never played without finding some contrived way to ask him about content he's never even heard of. I suppose that in my world, it feels normal to have a group conversation move in different directions, sometimes involving topics that relate to me, sometimes not. And it doesn't feel like an attack or an unfair situation if I'm not specifically pulled into every single topic. But the man I'm seeing does feel that way. He wants to be involved in every single topic, even things he knows nothing about or things that don't relate to him in any way. Otherwise, he gets significantly resentful and it seems as if though he begins to enter a shame spiral. And unfortunately, this can happen even when the conversation moves towards a topic that he doesn't relate to very briefly. I would never ever exclude anyone because I love when everyone feels like they can comment on any topic and be part of the enjoyment. But I don't want to feel responsible to constantly pull people into a brief conversation about something they have zero relation to. Him including himself doesn't seem to be the resolution because he wants to feel invited by others, which I completely understand. It's created this upsetting level of pressure where I feel guilt and worry when I'm not constantly pulling him into topic. Of course, I don't think he's wrong to have these feelings and I feel such sympathy for him because this is so difficult for him. He's not demanding, brazen, and childish. He simply voices the emotions that come up and he does so with a lot of shame, knowing that it's insecure and knowing that it discomforts me. While I think making an effort to include people is lovely, in my world, it genuinely doesn't feel unfair for every person in the group to have brief moments where they can't relate to, I mean, relate or to not be included in every single topic for every moment. That just feels normal in my world and his in indignation has me questioning this. To force myself to include him in every single little thing, every single little movement of conversation would feel unnatural and uncomfortable to me. It feels like I'd only do it out of fear that he's going to resent me or feel sad that I don't. I'm genuinely not trying to win here because I don't think he's wrong, but is it normal? Because I feel like maybe I'm not doing a good job. I want to make him feel loved and safe. Please be kind. What does this sound like to you? This sounds like a savior complex, like she, she said something about she's healed. And now that since she's healed, she's taken on a project in this man. And I, from reading this, this does not sound like a healthy dynamic for either one of these people, but you guys can weigh in. This person says, you can't resolve it. He has to, you can set a boundary about what you can accept in his behavior and what accommodations you're willing to make, but he has to work on this because it's his issue. And she's like, thank you for the direct response. And then this person says, okay, I'm being honest here. I think you're on thin ice with this one. He will end up eating you alive. Your whole post is about him, his feelings, what's in his head and how you can help him feel better. This is the very definition of codependency. He sounds tricky and these are red flags. His vulnerability is sucking you in to be his savior. You are being far too understanding and concerned about how he's feeling you do you, let him do him. He's an adult and has to manage himself in social situations. I'm only saying this because it's exactly how things unfolded in my last relationship. I'm still healing five months later. Now listen to how this woman talks. It's very interesting to me. She's like, this is very sweet. You are very, you are direct and firm without being judgmental. I will take on board what you said. You may be right. I was raised to feel responsible for, uh, for the feelings of others. The problem here is even I, I, if I was to take this stance of, I'm going to just do my thing, he can do his, it doesn't erase the fact that we're in groups and this occurs and he's going to be very obviously upset and uncomfortable. I don't feel I can just pretend that isn't happening. 
Thank you. So it's like the way she's phrasing it, she's like so happy that people are being so nice and giving her this information. I don't know. I don't know it, what this sounds like to me. You guys weigh in from your stance, but I think she really likes to be the savior person. I don't know. I mean, this is not really my lane, but you tell me what you are seeing as you hear this story. Um, I'm not going to do any more comments. Y'all just jump in. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, like the content, hit like, comment, and share. Not being on the same page, you know, with big things like getting married, timeframes, family planning, financial planning is challenging, especially when you think that you have found your person, you've talked things through, y'all are on the same page or so you think. This woman is mad. This was in the marriage subreddit. She says, husband took away my best years. She says, I'm hurt to say the least. All along, I thought my husband and I were on the same page. 11 years later, I'm here typing this long paragraph. I'm 30 and, and possibly a divorcee by the end of the year. I guess my husband thought it was a great idea to tell me he wanted a family with me all these years when in reality he didn't. And I'm fighting the disappointment and resentment I feel towards him. I never imagined my life would go this way, but here I am. I can stay, but possibly resent him. We, we could build a family, but he could possibly resent me. There's no compromise in this. We know we have to part ways. But how do I start a new life without him? My best years are gone, and I feel like my time was taken away from me. I know I'm still young, but I don't feel young enough to start all over, to meet someone else with good intentions. That will take time. My heart is sl breaking slowly, and I fight the tears daily, but, I all but they always win. I know he's tired of seeing me cry. I wish I could be strong like him. I feel this tightness and heaviness on my chest. I'm brokenhearted and scared of the unknown. I hope he never feels this way. He took my best years. Am I wrong for feeling this hurt? Regardless of what happened, I still love him deeply and he's my best friend. I just can't get past being lied to for this long. I forgive him, but this would have hurt less if he would have been honest since the beginning or even years earlier. She says, update, and she gets a long update. So people must have been really in the comment section because this was like two or three days ago. She says, thank you everyone from the bottom of my heart. Every single comment opened a new perspective for me. I am just very hurt and I'm very emotional and um, I'm a very emotional and loving individual that feels deeply. My post does sound dramatic, but it comes from a place of hurt. I have to say, I am looking forward to my 30s, thanks to you. I definitely do not see this decade as wasted years with him. He was a great husband and friend despite what happened, and I will always respect him and care for him because we grew up from the teens into adults um, we are today. I hope he finds someone to make him happy that shares the same values, and I hope that I do as well. For now, I'm planning on healing. Today, I have made the decision to file for divorce. I came to the conclusion that he had all this years, uh, he had all this years to change his mind and apparently never did. And giving him one more year will make no difference. I'm crying as I type this and he's laying next to me, hugging me. I can't lie. I'm heartbroken. I have to live this life without the man I thought would be my husband until the end. I will miss laying next to him, being silly with him, sharing laughs and smiles and all the good things we lived and built until now. I wish life wasn't this hard, or should I say, I wish life didn't have difficult decisions. I realize that he loves himself a lot to put his foot down and stand for what he wants. So in this case, I have to learn to love myself as much and go for what I want in life as well. I'm sure he thought I would never leave because I'm comfortable with him and my emotions make me seem weak, unable to leave. But I think I finally found the courage to face the challenges that lay ahead. I will put trust in the universe and God. Future be easy on me, please. That is hard. It is hard to be with someone for so long. Um, but if people would really, really just have some empathy for your supposed spouse and um, like be honest, someone lying to you for that long is hard. And I'm a person that had, kids in my 30s. I had my children 
at 33 and 36. I think it was 33. Yeah, 33 and 36. So I do understand, um, but it's possible. You can have healthy, happy children. You can have a um, a family, you can be safe in your pregnancy as long as you're healthy and you find somebody for you. And finding someone in your 30s is totally possible. I just want the other ladies that might be watching this to know and understand that life is not over and 30 is a wonderful jump off year. You know yourself, you won't compromise. So as you start dating in your 30s, you're, you can cross people off the list easier. And don't let folks waste your time. Do not spend this much time with people that are not on the same page with you. So I'm not going to do um, any of the comments because she laid it all out there. She laid it bare. Um, and the comments are, you know, as you can see from the update, the update was she has made a decision. And let's be real. When you're in a relationship, the person that you're with might not always do the things that you like. You cannot control that person. You can't. You can only see what they're doing and try to figure out your next steps. You do not have to stay paralyzed simply because this person has made a choice that you don't want to go along with. Do not go along with it if you don't feel comfortable. There's no compromising in this whole, you know, one person wants to be child free. The other person wants children. There's no compromise in that. You need to X that person off, thank them for the time that you spent together, and then move on and find the person that more aligns with what you want to see for your future. You guys, let me know what you think. Don't forget to jump in the comments and hit like. Go ahead and hit like and go ahead and share. I don't know if someone sent me this in by the a hole thread, but it's a woman. And like I keep saying about women, when women write these Emma the A-hole threads, they're simply looking for validation for normal human emotions. She says, Emma the A-hole for refusing to take care of my husband when he's sick, in quotes. Both my husband and I work full time. I work from home and we have a two and a half month exclusively breastfed baby. I already feel her. No, she's not the A-hole. For the past two days, our daughter has been screaming nonstop. She's cluster feeding, but she's fighting sleep as well. So bad. She starts to fall asleep and immediately starts flipping out. I'm so well beyond touched out. I'm completely worn down and exhausted. Thank God my job isn't a call position or I'd be screwed because it absolutely would not have happened. My And my husband hasn't helped at all because he's at work and has to get a full night of sleep um, because he's a driver. He's home four hours before he has to go to sleep for work. So I'm depleted. And yes, he 100% knows this. I'm liter I literally just sent him a text at 3 p.m. saying how exhausted I am and how the baby has not given me a single break all day and told him to pick himself up something to eat for dinner because I would definitely not be cooking. Remember that line. I told him to pick, pick himself something to eat for dinner because I definitely would not be cooking. She continues with, well, he gets home at 6.30 p.m. and immediately starts telling me how sick he is and start following me everywhere, moaning and groaning, saying, ugh, etc. I tell him, go take a shower. He says no because he has no energy. I tell him to take Tylenol. He says no. I said go sit on the bed and attempt to decompress because I finally got the baby to sleep and he curls up right behind me and won't stop touching me while moaning and groaning. I say, listen, I know you're feeling ill right now and I'm sorry, but if I keep getting touched and followed, I'm probably going to snap. I offered you solutions. Take one of them. He gets up and walks off without saying anything, but then the baby wakes up. So I got five minutes, 30 seconds of which I wasn't being touched. Well, at 8.40, so 30 minutes ago, I go and put the baby in her swing and take myself a bowl of cereal because I haven't eaten all day. But my husband is sitting directly in front of her swing gaming, so I had to scoot past him and touched his back on the way back through. And, he's, and he goes, ooh, yeah, rub right there. I said, So I said, no. At this point, I'm all but fuming because I'm so touched out. I get to the kitchen and he yells out, babe, can you get me something to eat? So I said in a clipped, nope. Um, he said, seriously? So I said, dead ass. I, 
I effing told you to pick something up for yourself because I wasn't making anything for dinner. He snapped at this point and said, it's not like I was effing asking you to cook me a meal. Jesus Christ, I feel like sh too. And walks off to the bedroom. He texts me from the bedroom and I said, I don't get it at all. You used to love, no, I'm sorry. And he said, I don't get it at all. You used to love taking care of me when I was sick. So I was founded with, yeah, and you used to love making sure I was good in general, but you see me touch the F out and still want me to cater to you instead of taking slack off me for five goddamn minutes. He moved to the guest room now. Am I the a-hole? No, you're not the a-hole. You have two and a half, a uh, two and a half month year old. I'm sorry, two, half, two and a half month old. You are exclusively breastfeeding. Those cluster feedings are challenging and Thinking about work during that time is very, very challenging. Doing anything during that time is very challenging. I um, exclusively breastfed two babies for two years. So just reading that part was like, oh my God, this woman needs help. She does not need to be working a full-time job because I don't know how women do that. But she gets it done. And so this is where husbands dads have got to step in and at the very least he just needed to take care of himself this woman basically had a newborn and an overgrown toddler that is fully capable of doing things for himself she said back here pick up something for dinner i'm not cooking she lets him know i am tired i am drained he does not he purposely did not he did not listen so he is still looking to be babied, probably because he has a baby in the house that is now getting the attention that he was once getting. And this woman, if this doesn't get taken care of, is she's going to leave this toddler so she can raise her child. This person says, my dear lady, this isn't about you being an a-hole. You are exhausted and need a break and some support. Your husband needs to manage his own care and feeding if you have someone who can watch your baby for even 30 minutes, please do. Even if you just sit in an empty bathtub with the door locked, wishing you a little rest and untouched peace. Someone else says, yeah, the person who should watch the baby for 30 minutes is, on, is the other parent of the baby who is playing video games instead. And then someone else says, but he's sick. Then this person responded with, but I would ask if the husband also takes care of her when she's sick, but I think we already know the answer. Um, and then this person said, isn't there a Tylenol commercial where the slogan is that dads don't take sick days? <laughs> and I'm going to end it with this person. The OP obviously has two babies. I'm not pretending to be the perfect husband or dad, but I do everything I can to take pressure off my wife anytime I can with our um, our four month old. And that's how it should be. This should be a partnership. Um, you know, people do get sick, but a, a newborn, an infant is hard and breastfeeding is draining. Breastfeeding is draining and it's consistent. It's round the clock and it's interrupted sleep. It's, whew, I feel for this lady so badly. You guys go ahead and weigh in with your thoughts. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.